Hey everybody, Jason here again with Engineering Essentials. Today we're going to be talking about tolerance stacks. We get a lot of questions about tolerance stacks, especially related to coordinate dimensions. But if you use gd &T, in most scenarios you can avoid these tolerance stacks. Let's take a look at this part here and see where we might find some tolerance stacks while designing this part. More specifically, let's focus on the bore in the center here with respect to the bolt circle around it. What if we dimension the location of that bore to the center from the bottom with a plus or minus dimension and we also locate the center of the bolt circle in the same fashion. We will also have to dimension the bolt circle itself with a plus or minus dimension. And lastly we'll have to locate the bolt hole with respect to its adjacent bolt hole. Again this will be some sort of plus or minus dimension likely in degrees. So the location of this hole is reliant on a plus or minus angular dimension, a plus or minus diametric dimension, as well as a locating dimension in x as well as y. Now, if we're taking the location of that bolt hole with relativity to the bore itself, we also have to take into account the tolerance of the bore location. Let's take a look at a drawing that I created with coordinate dimensions to further explain this concept. Now, as we said, the center bore could be located vertically and horizontally with plus or minus dimensions. Here we have a 3 inch dimension and a 4 inch dimension both held to plus or minus 5 thousandths. And we also have that bolt hole located with a diametric tolerance on the bolt circle of 4.250 plus or minus 17 thousandths and some sort of angular tolerance depending on how you interpret the drawing. And again, the bolt circle will have to be located in Y as well as X. The stack up of these tolerances is a bit tricky to calculate. Not to mention, there's nothing you could put on this drawing that will actually guarantee the timing of this pattern of the holes is in respect to the outside of the part. And keep in mind that if you're dimensioning these holes as feature to feature shown here, this is no different than a chain dimension that causes a locational tolerance stack up nightmare. Now I know the argument can be made that the bolt center must follow the bore, but there's really no documentation or any standards that will support this. And if this were the case, you'd be able to measure this bolt hole with respect to the center of that bore. Now if you design your tolerances and your part with this assumption, and your QC department decides to inspect these features as separate features, both being located plus or minus five thousandths, you'll definitely have an issue with tolerance stackup. What I want you to understand here is that the dimensions on this print will be interpreted many ways. There are no standards to support most assumptions that many of us have heard and will operate under in many scenarios like this, myself included. And make no mistake, with a drawing like this, you will always have to make assumptions when calculating these tolerances to result and working positions for these bolt holes. And if you have a great working relationship with your quality team in an assembly department, then you'll likely avoid any cost and mistakes. However, if you're the third party supplier or have to outsource these parts, then most likely a breakdown in communication will happen between how the part was designed and toleranced with respect to how the part is assembled and inspected. And this can cause costly and time consuming issues. However, one way to fix this is to use gd &T. We see here the same part, but now it's dimensioned using gd &T callouts. The best thing to do when you first open a drawing is to look for all the datums. We see first here that datum feature A is being controlled with flatness, and that's this back surface here. Next we have datum feature B being controlled perpendicular back to datum A with a perpendicularity tolerance of one thousandths. And lastly we have datum C, which is going to be the midplane of this keyway with position back to datum features A and datum feature B. Now that we've set up our datum reference frame, we can look at the position callout for the bolt hole right here. Now we know that the position callout is referencing datum feature A as primary, datum feature B as secondary, and datum feature C as tertiary. We know that datum feature A is a plane and will lock down three degrees of freedom, two rotations, and one translation. Datum feature B as a cylinder will then only lock down two translations. And finally, datum feature C will lock down that third degree of rotation. 
Now that our part is fully constrained to the datum reference range A, B, and C, we know that when we check the position of this bolt hole, or any of the other six bolt holes, they will be in respect to datum feature A, B, and C respectively. There's no assumptions to be made, and the location of the outside of this part can be controlled to the bore hole separately. Now we see here that the four and a quarter is now a basic dimension, as well as the 60 degrees. These basic dimensions set up the true position of each one of these bolt holes. There's no tolerance associated with any of these basic dimensions, so no stack up will occur. These dimensions relate back to the datum reference frame, and that is why it's so crucial that the datum reference frame mimics the way the part is assembled. That way you know you're checking position with respect to the way the part is being assembled, thus eliminating any tolerance stackups on the location of these holes with respect to the bore. And if you're wondering where the 0 0.025 tolerance comes for the position in the callout here, GD&T has an answer for that as well. If you're using the position callout, there are easy formulas to follow if you know the tolerances for your mating assembly and the fasteners. This is a bit of an advanced topic, and we cover that in our course if you're curious. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this sheds some light on how you can avoid tolerance stacks in the future by using GD&T. Be sure to visit the website, check out our additional free resources, here you can test your knowledge with our print reading and GD&T quizzes. You can also download helpful wall charts and access articles written by our training experts.